No. Look, let's have a word with an Arsenal fan. Dave has called us this morning. Morning, Dave. Morning, gents. How are we? Yeah, good. How are you feeling this morning, though? I, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, Jeff, I think I, I think you both have given him a bit too much credit. I think that once again we've fallen at the last hurdle. I think City will win it now. They'll go on and win it. But he has ignored. I mean, we're into full fifth season. He's ignored. Um, He's ignored the fact that we need an out and out striker. He spent fifty million on Jesus, who you know couldn't hit a cow's backside of the banjo. Um, we've got Havertz, and everyone goes, "Oh, he's, no, he's not. He, he's been average. He scored ten goals or whatever, but he's, he's quite average. He's not an out and out striker. We can see that." And the basics of it are: oh, Adrian Clark said earlier, well, "I think it's hard to um, criticise him." That's no, really easy to criticise him. He bought a hundred spent. A lot of money, a hundred million on Declan Rice, or a hundred and five. And yesterday we couldn't work out in the second half. And this is not the first time we've had a lethargic second half. We we couldn't work out. He couldn't work out how to get us over the line. And the difference is that Klopp and Guardiola have won the things they've won because they are top draw managers. And we keep we keep falling. And I'm not one of these who thinks, oh gosh, we're going to win the league all the time. But when you're as close as we are, you need someone who knows, like Mourinho, Guardiola, Klopp, those sorts of managers, they know what to do. And he's played at the highest level. You know. And I think he should be criticised. You know? I think he's getting... Dave, I, look, I think you're absolutely within your rights to criticise. I, I, where I would I would perhaps draw a line a little bit on, 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 on what you're saying, you know, they've... They've been very, very good for a consistent period now, Arsenal. Yes, they fell short the weekend when it absolutely mattered. And that's that's the, the, the question that everybody's been throwing about Arsenal for some time now. But I don't think you... I think it's very difficult to, 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 to pick holes in what they've done. You've scored a lot of late goals in games. You mentioned about not being able to get over the line. They've shown Arsenal, this Arsenal team, haven't played well always, but have managed to get over the line. And that's always kind of been the difference that I've seen in this Arsenal team. Now, look, there's still six to go, Dave. There's still an opportunity. There's still a chance. You could do it. Yeah, you haven't fallen at the last just yet, Dave. Dave, look, thanks very much for the call. We've got a lot of callers to get through. We're going to move on to a couple of Liverpool fans. Gary is a Liverpool fan. Morning, Gary. Morning, guys. You all right? All right, Gary. Yeah, thanks. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I, it's their passing. It's Liverpool's passing. It's it's not as what it used to be. It's it, the last few games against Man United, against Atalanta, and against Crystal Palace. The passing's not there. They keep no. Nah. It's not there. Well, Gary, again, what it, the final pass, maybe. That final one across the six-yard box for someone. That final one into someone in a, in, a, in a really good situation where they could possibly score. Against Man United, Jeff, they'd have, been, they'd have been home and dry if they'd have been able to find just a little bit more care right at the vital moment when it, when it mattered. They had great chances at the weekend. You know, Darwin Nunez turns and rattles mm. that one and hits the goalkeeper. Curtis Jones is through one-on-one, -on -one, should at least hit the target. They brought Jota and had a great Jota chance Jota had as that well. chance. Mo Salah, again, as Salah, you're right. Salah's gone off the boil lately. Look, he's been mm. incredible. No one's knocking what he's done. But right at now and at, at the moment, Mo Salah's not been playing at his very best. Gary, thanks very much. It's not over just yet. Uh, what about Ralph, the Liverpool fan? Ralph, what do you want to say? Hey, KJ, hi, Andy. How are you both? Good. Good, how Ralph. are you feeling though? Uh, well, I was at the game yesterday and I think we could have played them for another 40 minutes and we wouldn't have scored. I think it was one of those games where we must have deflected goals to, to score because yeah. it didn't seem like it was going to happen and Palace defended so well um, and it just didn't happen for us. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, look, I think uh, our defence over the season hasn't exactly been watertight. We've conceded so many times the first goal. We've had the firepower to come back, and now the fact that we're not scoring is cost, costing us quite dearly, missing the chances where we are conceding, we're not coming back now. Um, and obviously, City now are going to be firm favourites in my eyes. 
Um, look, Ralph, thanks very much indeed. You're spot on, by the way. Consider the first goal in 14 Premier League games. That's a lot. This is that, that is that is a lot. Just uh, a quick uh, text from Craig in Cranlington. Uh, morning, Jeff. Can you give a shout out to the women's team of Newcastle United? Back to back promotions achieved yesterday with a 10 0 win against Huddersfield. Uh, they go up as champions. They go into the women's championship next season. They've got a derby against Durham, possibly another one against Sunderland. I met. Um, some of the, the the Newcastle women's team when I was doing a charity event for Kids Out in Newcastle earlier in the year and they were absolutely fantastic, I'll tell you that. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.